say some evil stuff about Chapin High School. <laughs> it's not the one I grew up in. You know, the one I grew up in is the one that we're talking about now. You know, all, all the love and, and how everybody got along with everybody else. You know, it, it, it was a good place to grow up in. You know, I, I know all, I'm not going to talk about all the inductees. I didn't know the first guy. But I know everybody else. You know, I played with these people. I, I, I watched them when they were being normal. You know, I watched them when nobody was looking. And they were good people. You know, you know Joe Shelby made me want to get a big letter jacket because when I saw him, he had stuff everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, and, and, and that's what I wanted. You know, I, I watched Charlie, you know, playing baseball. You know, you know and, and Coach Rogers coached me in the eighth grade, you know, and, and it, was, it, it, was, it was good people. And it was, it was a good time. Mm. You know, I want to thank my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I can say that now because I don't work for the school district anymore. You know, so <laughs> for, for giving me, for allowing me the opportunity, you know, because he had a sense of humor. He takes somebody who talks fast and stutters and makes them talk. You know, and it's like, well, Lord, I really don't want to talk. But it was like, well, talk anyway. You know, and tell you a quick story. Not like Coach Selby, but tell you a quick story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when, when I was in... When I was in college, you know, I was at Lord, Lord Ryan, you know, and two of my, two of my roommates, my first roommate from, not my second roommate, second not, roommate. Not the first one, <laughs> it, it, it came down from North Carolina this evening, you know, and my, then my second roommate, you know, at Lord Ryan, they both came down to, to check me out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I was going to use this time not to talk about me, but to talk about some people, you know, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a good thing to know, and it took me a long time to realize this, that I didn't want to say anything about anything that I've done. My, my daughter just found out for the first time that I was tutored by the president. You know, this stuff, I've been married to my wife for 23 years, she's just not finding out. <laughs> you know, you know, There's it, it, stuff that I don't, I don't say, you know, because in my mind it's, it's not important, but it's not about me. You know, it's mm -hmm. about, about Ms. Carwell, Mr. Carwell taking me to get clothes, you know, let me, let, let me pick out clothes. You know, it's about Coach Dillon who, who gave me a blank check. So and, and told me don't you know if I ever got arrested I was like no I don't think I'm gonna get arrested <laughs> <laughs> but 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 but, but, it, but I, I took that check you know and I gave it back to him on the news you know not for me but for him you know you know I'm talking about two two of my heroes you know and then, then I'm gonna sit down now one of my one of my best friends in high school a little short dude named Charles Metz now me and Charles are best of buddies. You know, it was like an old redneck white dude and a, and a little black dude, you know, but, 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 we, but we were best of friends. You know, people perceived that Charles as something that he wasn't. You know, they thought Charles was a dumb white boy. You know, Charles could take a piece of, gar a piece of grass and some dirt and make a race car out of it. You know, that's how good a mechanic he was. You know, and Charles fought for everything that he ever got. You know, he didn't give up, he didn't quit, he didn't whine about it. That was Charles, you know. And I wanted to glorify him a little bit, you know. Charles makes more money than me now, you know, and, and I'm supposed to have all this education, you know. He didn't let what people perceived him to be stop him from being who he was going to be, you know. And I'm going to talk about my, my very first hero, you know. My very first hero is sitting over there, you know, Rudolph Bowers. And, and it's funny because I'm Randolph and he's Rudolph. But growing up, it was just Rudolph and the other Rudolph. <laughs> so, 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 you know, because yeah. actually, those are my cousins right there, so they, you know, and it, and, and it was, it took me a while to, to distinguish, to get, to get my Randolph in this end, so to speak, you know, but, you know, he, he, he had a problem with his eye, but Rudolph played basketball with us in the field. He did everything just as good as me, better than me. He didn't, I didn't think, I didn't know what a disability was because Rudolph didn't have one, you know. When, when we were playing Mike football, you know, to, 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 in order to play, they had this sign up that we had to read, you know. They, they didn't do the eye test, but it was a sign that we had to read. I told him what it was. I think if we don't have it, we would get it for you. He read that sign like he was a champ. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he got to, and he got to play, you know. He never let his anything that, that was negative keep him down. Rudolph is now the, the facilities manager. You know, at John Dela Howe. I mean, he gets he gets to play with the tractors. He gets to, he, he sits in the desk and tells folks what to do all day. You know, he doesn't like it, but you know, he, that's what he's supposed to do. You know, so it, the, one of the saddest days was when I outran Rudolph for the very first time. You know, you shouldn't beat your heroes. You know, the look on his face made me sad. <laughs> 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 so, 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 
So, so, so when, when, when people thought we were doing it before, they were like, well, you ain't playing hard against your brother when he would play pickup ball, and I, I want to go, well, I ain't. <laughs> you know, but his, the perception that it had didn't stop him from being who he was going to be. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. I remember my story, but I, te I teach special ed, so I'm going to go all over the place, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be done in about two minutes, about four minutes. Four. Mm -hmm. Now, we were sitting in college, you know, we, we were getting ready to go shoot ball, and, it, we were, and a bunch of these smart guys, and we were solving all the world's problems. You know, we, we had solved every problem in the world, right, right, about 10 minutes before we shoot ball, we solved all the problems, you know. <laughs> but there were these two little kids that, that made us all look stupid. They said one of the most profound things that I have ever heard in my life. One kid was talking to the other kid, and he said, look, you think that you are hot snot on a silver platter. And I was like, okay, where's it going? And, I, and he said, then he said, but all you are is a cold booger on a paper plate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that was the most profound thing that I have, that I have ever heard. <laughs> you know, as good as you are, you feel a booger. <laughs> so, and, and I won't leave you with one last story. Now, I had some great coaches. You know, and, and I could go down, I could tell you something about each one of them, you know, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. At the same time, and I was, but I'm not. So, but I realized, because I, I never wanted to coach, you know, Coach Grand got me back into coaching, you know, because Coach Mulder had tried to get me to coach, you know, but I was, I was done, you know. But I realized that when you coach, you get to know people, you get to know kids, you get to know students, you get to know, you, you have to get involved in their stuff, you know. That's right. A lot of times it's sad. You know, there was a kid that I had in special ed. You know, he he was one of four. You know, he, he you know he, he was born, you know, he, he was, and I called him one of four because he he was the second oldest. He was about this big. You know, and uh, he was in my class. You know, and what was great about him, you know, I had to go to speech when I was little. You probably can imagine that, but I had to go to speech <laughs> when I was little. You know, but this little kid, he was going to speech, and he couldn't say the word work. So of course, being a great teacher that I am, every opportunity that I got, I make him say work, you know. And he, you know, and, and he do it every time, you know. He had a great attitude. He didn't care who saw him. He was gonna be himself. He came out, and I said, "Well, you gonna come out for track, right?" You know. He came out for track. He had on those long socks up to about to up to his knee, you know, and and and, and, and the ugly shorts, you know. And he, was, and he was running track, you know, and, and he was getting to know people. People were getting to know him. He was running track. And I said, well, your name was Owen. I said, Owen, you know, when you run track and you the man, you probably shouldn't let girls beat you. you know? so, 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 so the girls were beating him, but Owen, was just, he, was, he was loving it. You know? He was a happy child. He was ready to face all of this stuff. This talk. I got a call that summer from, from my teacher, you know, my head teacher. She said, Owen's dead. And I was like, what? I said, how is, how is this possible? You know, I want to question God. I want to say, God, there's a whole bunch of folks that I wish you would kill. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you kill this kid? You know? You know? You know? But, but Owen's strength, you know, Owen was such a great dude that I said, well, as long as I'm going to be alive, I'm going to talk about Owen. You know? I'm going to talk about Owen and how he loved God. You know? <coughs> you know? He, didn't, he didn't whine or cry about dying. He said, well, if I'm going to die, I want to die for, for a good reason. And he died for a good reason. I don't talk about him every chance I get. You know? I don't talk much, of course, you know, but I don't want to talk about me. Because in reality, I didn't start playing sports for me. I started playing sports so my dad wouldn't touch my mama no more. You know? That wasn't going to happen no more. You know? I could talk about how, how the places that I came from. You know, wasn't a good place most of the time. So I came from that place. You know? But the last thing I'm going to leave with you, you know, thank Lord Jesus Christ for, for allowing me to be me, you know? And thank Lord for giving me my wife. You know, she puts up with a lot. You know, she puts up with the none, none running, none jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do nothing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much me and the snake. <laughs> you know? So thank you for that, you know, and Please, whenever you see somebody, don't look at their perception. Get to know the person. 
Thank you.